looking my full 80 kilos i think uh, well a little less probably <laughs> hi this is lipika and you are uh, here with me to uh, meet s venkatesh uh, uh, the author of the best selling novel kalkut hi and today we are here talking about the book and some fun things that you don't know about the writers that 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 mixture of you know free will obstinacy determination on one side and yet a vulnerable sort of side i, I think that was quite But I just think the so sheer. So you really have something for weapons of mass destruction, no? <laughs> uh, so Venkatesh, why not we start with uh, you telling us a bit about the book? Sure. So um, you know, a lot of Kalpur was actually written on flights. Mm. A few years ago, I was traveling extensively between Mumbai, Singapore, and Vietnam. Okay. Like three fifty flights in one and a half years, and that's when I wrote the book. Uh, so Kalkut is a thriller, but it's got a strong historical underpinning to it. Um, it brings together a secret from the last days of the freedom struggle, uh, a, a forgotten legend from the Himalayas, and a modern-day conspiracy together in a thriller. And there's a race against time, and um, you know, so and, and and I particularly liked uh, following the journey of the characters as 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 they. as they go along the book in fact in some ways the book wrote itself because the characters just sort of drove the book rather than me having to drive the characters why a thriller why not romance why not uh, maybe you know uh, uh, sarcasm or comic or you know humor why sure. not any other genre well i actually loved reading thrillers from mm-hmm. the time i was a kid mm-hmm. and i love thrillers particularly because thrillers generate a whole array of emotions mm-hmm. so and and of course there's always the pace and the racing in time but it's just the, the sheer array of emotions that you're generating in a thriller is so vast and there is no reason that a thriller can't be combined with romance mm-hmm. or sarcasm or humor right uh, thrillers are defined primarily as i said by the intensity of the emotions that they generate True. so that could be in a romantic setting as well it just so happens that kalkut actually has a little bit of romance romance in it mm. but i don't see romance and thrillers for instance or mm. you know any other genre and thrillers as being separate from each other they don't have to be okay but are you a romantic in real life um i suppose so yeah okay i'll have to ask <laughs> I, i believe in you know <laughs> i believe in things like you know beauty wonder love and some of the more uh, finer emotions and i feel that in some ways beyond dry logic and you know being rational and you know success and achievement those are i think still more surface level mm. emotions mm. but i think the real drivers of a person's personality are deeper things you know it's it's things like love which actually make the world go around yeah. now coming to characters of your book why uh, i mean firstly uh, how easy is it to uh, sketch a character or of an opposite sex well um or how difficult is it um actually i think and especially the, because in your book you have a very strong female character yes so uh, damini's character uh, is one of my favorites in the book and i think the main thing with a character is authenticity mm-hmm. so it can't be something that's scooped out of your head mm-hmm. it has to so actually so what are you thinking of when you were sketching no, no one person <laughs> actually i think okay. it's just an amalgamation of various people that i've come across right i think the main thing with a character is um, if it's real enough mm-hmm. then you don't have to think or you know conjure up what they're going to do next mm-hmm. you let the character drive what they're going to do next so you think hey this is the type of person this is the type of situation what would they do in this situation oh. and the answer might surprise you sometimes so damini's character is actually as i said an amalgamation of various people i have encountered she is strong willed she is obstinate uh, she can go to any lengths to you know if she believes in something she can go to any lengths to accomplish that task oh. uh, but she also has her own internal conflicts and vulnerabilities oh. and that 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 mixture of you know free will obstinacy determination on one side and yet a vulnerable sort of side i think that was quite interesting for me do you think it becomes uh, 
I mean, does it make you a better person uh, when when you have this ability to uh, delve into characters and different, I mean, different kinds of characters and different uh, genders, you know, especially. Uh, does does it make you a better person in some way? Are you able to understand your wife better? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, that's a trick question, but. <laughs> That's a trick question, but no, seriously, actually, um, I think just being able to put yourself in other people's shoes mm. is a fascinating experience in itself. And mm. I'm guessing maybe it improves your ability to understand others, maybe not, I don't know, but it's it's in itself a very fulfilling uh, process. Yeah. Mm. So, um, I'm not going to answer your trick question, but... <laughs> <laughs> and what are you on to next? Um, so, I'm writing another thriller. Uh, this has also got a historical... Uh, backdrop to it. Okay. Uh, but I'm experimenting with a lot of new things in this book and so I'm very excited about it. It's called Agni Baan, Guardians okay. of the Fire Chamber. Mm -hmm. uh, it should be out in the next few months. Any reason that your uh, titles are always very, very Indian and very Hindi and very Sanskrit? Well, um, I just think that we have a vast storehouse of mythology and yeah. imagery yeah. in our heritage. Yeah. Um, and some of these words are so, you know, evocative, they convey so many things. Mm. So Kalkut is the name of the primordial poison that came out during the mythical churning of the cosmic ocean right. in the Puranas. Mm. And uh, primordial poison that can destroy the whole universe. That's just a fascinating thought, right? right. Agni Baan means uh, fire arrow. Mm. And uh, so you'll obviously find out more about it when the book comes out. But I just think the so sheer... So you really have something for weapons of mass destruction, no? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not telling you the plot of the next book. But, you know, yeah. um, I think um, obviously uh, there are just so many things right. in the world around us mm. that are intriguing. So I think I'm just intrigued by a lot of things. Okay. And yeah, some of them may involve mass destruction, some may not. Mm -hmm. yeah. So now at the end of it, we have um, a rapid fire round for okay. you. So I'll throw five questions and you will not get more than a second to oh gosh, okay. think and okay. answer. Right? Yeah. Okay. So the first one goes, uh, do you Google yourself? Myself? No. My book, yes. Okay. If you're stranded on an island? I find uh, the first thought that comes to mind is I've got to figure out what to eat. I don't know why. <laughs> And, and then and then try to escape after that, I guess maybe. <laughs> and if you if you wake up uh, one day into one of your characters, what would that be? Which one would that? Be? Oh wow, my, one of the characters in my book. Yes. Actually, I like uh, both Sam's and Bani's character. I can't say Damini; it's, it's a character of the opposite gender. Uh, she fascinates me, mm. but Sam and Bani's character is more relatable to me. So Bani is this professor who lives in his own inner world, and he's cranky and. Uh, um, He's a little eccentric, but okay. he's brilliant, and he's discovering something that is that can change the world. Uh, Sam's character is that of a person who does not realize what he's capable of okay. internally, and as the book goes along, okay. he realizes the sheer intensity of the feelings that he has, okay. and the fact that he could go to ends of the world okay. for somebody that he loves. Okay. So yeah, I see a little bit of myself maybe in both those. But, yeah. So that's the romantic in you coming. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> okay, and uh, uh, what would what is the one line you use to uh, uh, you know uh, get your kid to listen to it? Oh gosh, actually, it's all, um, it, I, I think she she largely uh, doesn't listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> she largely doesn't listen to me. I try to you know glare at her, but that doesn't but work. Doesn't work. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, which is your favorite song? All-time favorite when you uh, um, Divana Hua Badar just came to my mind. Which is your favorite food? Um, I like desserts of all sorts. Okay. Um, yeah, I like desserts of all sorts. Indian, rasgulla. Uh, so you're not into too much of uh, checking on calories and keeping a check on calories. And I am food. attempting to, yeah, okay. to put it mildly. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but I love desserts. I love cold coffee. I love uh, you know milkshakes and the like. Yeah. Okay, okay. And what if you turn into your partner one day, your wife one day? What would you do? Oh, she's much more creative than I am. Oh? My wife obviously sings a lot better. She's a professional musician. Thank you so much for being with me here. It was lovely speaking Thank to you. Thank you. It's been yeah. a pleasure. <laughs>